Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, the home of random projects. We have lists, we have Jeeps, we have trucks, we have food. You name it, we got it. So help out the channel by just hitting that subscribe button. And if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you really like the video, like it and then tell a friend. But stay tuned, enjoy yourself. I'm gonna let you go because I got stuff to do. Hey, welcome to the land of fans. I do apologize for the audio on this one. I got a fan there, fan there, fan there. I got the big whirly bird up top. It's supposed to be 107 degree heat index today. So what better day to weld? So what we're actually gonna do today is actually a few more modifications to the trailer. I kinda mentioned it last time on the last video that I wanted to put some uh, fenders on this. So I picked up some fenders. Um, I really wanted some of the thicker stuff to be able to stand on it but I couldn't find it anywhere locally. I did pick these guys up from Agri Supply and we're gonna modify them slightly in order to make them a little bit better. So, also some other updates. Uh, I might have a lead on getting some steel for the back end of this thing. Right now I just have some uh, two by 12 just kind of bolted on there and I kind of lost that one. Um, but we're gonna put an entire sheet of at least, I'm hoping 10 gauge, maybe 11 to be able to finish it off and make it look like the rest of it. Uh, also, I did pick up some more uh, tie downs. I'm gonna put this in the front. Because in my last video, you probably saw that the straps were actually rubbing against the tire in the front because they're just too far out. And the Jeep is just too far in. So we're gonna put some new ones up there. So we're gonna weld those up there and uh, put my jacket on so I can sweat my butt off and lose some of this water weight. It is getting pretty pathetic that I can't go out there and play basketball all the time. So, um, how did I know that is that is a 10 gauge or maybe an 11 gauge or maybe? A buddy of mine at work, TK, gave me one of these. He picked up one for himself. He picked up one for me too. Such an awesome guy. Now check it out and this is how you actually use it and how I figured out that I need a eighth of an inch on the trailer deck. All right, so uh, this is something that my dad did years and years and years ago because this thing had sits outside and it actually collects water. So he wanted to put something in there for drain. So I'm gonna take my gauge. As you can see, there's grooves all along the side here. And then, I'm gonna stick it in. There you go. This keychain part is killing me. All right, so it comes up to be right at eighth of an inch. <clears throat> so when I'm looking for this steel, I actually send out a message to everybody in the group, uh, which I'm part of the CNC uh, it's Central North Carolina 4x4 uh, group, club, if you want to call it. Uh, and Mr. Devin actually reached out to me and said, hey, I might, have, I might know a guy. So he's working on that angle. I got Mr. Ed over there uh, trying to find a different angle for me. So either way, I should be able to get some steel. Now I was going to put some diamond plate on it and make it look fancy. But then if you think about it, I also put mulch in this thing. And if I run a shovel across diamond plate, it doesn't move. So no, we're not gonna put down on the plate. We're gonna do actually flat, flat uh, just flat, maybe some cold rolled steel. Anyway, we'll weld that in there and actually make it decent. And then once we get done with all that, then we're gonna paint it. But first, let's uh, check out these fenders that I picked up from Agri Supply. All right, so here is one of the fenders. It is a 66 inch long by I believe nine inches wide. And pick this up and there's a problem with it. It's flimsy. Oh, I can twist it that way, twist it that way. I want to put that up there. Uh, one of the kids is going to step on it, deform it all up, and then I got to bend it all back. So what are we going to do to actually strengthen this up? We'll check a look at this one. All right, here's the one that I've already played around with. And as you can see, it's got little dots all over the thing because this one does not flex. There we go, because I just welded in some all thread all the way down and actually formed it to match the radius of the actual uh, the fender itself. Now, is this gonna be sturdy enough to, for me to stomp on? No, probably not. But you're not gonna go down the road and it's sitting there flopping up and down. So, 
that's what we're gonna do to the other side real quick. All right, I think that's all the modifications we wanna do today, at least, because uh, eventually you're just gonna get bored with it. We'll stop watching, so I'm just gonna keep going. Um, so the all thread that I picked up, all right, so as everybody probably already knows that I do go up to the American Legion Post 116 quite a bit. It is a great group of men and women that have defended our country. So I do appreciate everything they have done and everything they're still doing with our community. Uh, they were doing some cleanup and this was actually sitting off in the woods. Uh, it is quite a bit of all thread and they were gonna throw it away. So I picked it up because I got things I can do with it because a scout is thrifty. This thrifty scout is gonna take these and we'll take it over to the vise, get a couple good bends on it to be able to match the radius of the actual fender itself. And then we're just gonna weld it on. And hopefully my welder doesn't overheat again because of the 107 degree heat index. I think it's like 94, 98 or something like that, but very humid. So it's gonna suck, you're gonna see me sweat a lot. And you're gonna have to deal with all the fan noise, which I'll try to cut out later. Anyway. Let's grab a couple of these, get them on the fender, and get them bent. Alright, I got my four bends. They're pretty, pretty close. Uh, what we can do is actually start welding on one side, and then use some uh, vice grips to actually pull it down to actually make it sort of straight. Now, one thing you need to understand about all this stuff here. When you're welding, this, I'm not sure if it is, but I believe it is, but it is galvanized. The gas that comes off here can hurt you. So please do this in a well ventilated area. I think I have one, two, three, four fans going. We should be okay. Just make sure that the fan is not directly blowing on your work because then it just blows the gas away and then you just got some dirty, uh, dirty welds. So what we're gonna do to get some of the coating off, to try to make it a little bit safer and also be able to get it to weld properly, Get a wire brush. We're gonna sit there and get all the trash and stuff out of all the threads, try to get some of the coating off. Do the same thing to your fender itself. There is a coating on there to keep it from rusting in transit and also storage. Uh, so go ahead and get that off. Just use a wire brush. Um, you can use flap wheels if you want, but it's taken off too much material. We just wanna get rid of the top coat. So use a wire brush. And also, wear your safety goggles. It's bad enough that all those uh, wire, when they break off, it goes into your belly. Yo, let's make it happen. All right, so we got both sides uh, kind of tacked in there a little bit. Uh, look like I. Man, I mean, I had too much wind and my uh, my gas kind of left me there. But anyway, as you can see, it's about every two inches. Uh, just put a really fat tack on there. You don't really have to go the whole way. This is kind of thin metal and you don't want it to warp. So two inches, you know, bounce around if you can. I did this side, then I did that side, then I came back to this side. Um, also, before you start putting everything in there, once you scrape all that coating off, it's gonna start rusting. So I did forget on this side, but I didn't on that side, but use some weld through primer and that will at least help protect it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to strengthen up once this cools down, strengthen up some of the tacks just to get a little more beef and then uh, we'll start on the other side. And then in the middle, we'll just measure off some, uh, some other sticks, weld that in and then paint it and good to go. Uh, and then we figure out how we're going to attach it to the trailer itself. But yeah. Um, also, I also found uh, using a sawzall blade actually gets the crap off the tip of the gun. I don't have any uh, uh, tip dip or anything like that, so we got to use what we got. Seems to be a, uh, a trend here. Make do with what you got. All right, let's keep going.
like I said before, it is hot today. Um, my welder kind of overheated, it shuts off. It's only got a 20% duty cycle. It's just, it's small. So Lincoln, if you're watching, send me some, send me an email. We'll work something out. This guy, I love it, but you can't get too much done at one time because it does overheat and it's not the greatest in the world when it comes to that. Now, if I had a 220 with a big fan on it, maybe it might last, I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna let these two things cool off. I'm gonna go get a drink so I don't dehydrate. And then I'm gonna figure out how in the heck I'm gonna mount these things to the actual trailer itself. I would like to use some bolts so I can take it off if I need to. If not, weld them on, why not? All right, let's see what we can come up with. All right, it's a new day and it's not 5,000 degrees today. It's actually a lot cooler. We had some hellacious storms come through here last night. I kind of put a damper on my production here. Not only that, I kept, uh, I ran out of wire for the welder, went to like four different places, everybody's out of 0.35 solid core wire. I don't understand it. I finally found some at Lowe's, but I had to go get the little two, two pounders. It's not gonna last long, but it's okay. I bought two of them, bought them out. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to order some and get some in the next few days. So, I uh, figured out a way to actually mount these guys, and I think they actually come out pretty well. So, what do I use for it? Oh, yes. Lawnmower blades. Uh, I used to run my own business way back when, when I was in college and also high school. Uh, pretty much I took it over from my father, and we went through blades. Uh, we swapped them out every day, sharpened them, and that's why this is cut in so much, because we kept sharpening them all the time, because we wanted sharp blades. Well, I don't have those mowers anymore, but I still have all the blades. Now this is hardened steel. It's really hard to cut. It's really hard to, to uh, bend. Don't bend it. It's not going to happen. Just makes straight cuts, weld it back together. So I already put this one on and check it out. It's not going anywhere. She is pretty much on there, not coming off. Now, one thing I was going to do to this thing is actually have it bolt on so I could take it on and off. Um, ended up just welding it on. Uh, I was tired of dealing with it, so I just welded it straight on there. Not going to get it off without a cutoff wheel. But if we need to, that's what we'll do. All right, I'm going to show you on the other side exactly what I did on this side. It's actually pretty sweet. And it is up there. I uh, went ahead and painted underneath, uh, so I don't have to worry about that again. But when I paint the whole thing, I'll be painting that again. Probably with some rust oleum or something. I don't know. But anyway, let's uh, get into the other side because time is a waste. All right, we're pretty much ready to actually put the uh, second one back on. It's all been painted underneath. It is sitting on a board that I put on top of the tires because you do want to have some sort of suspension travel. Uh, basically, I believe it's like a four inch travel. Should be plenty for what I'm doing here. If the tire rubs into it, it rubs into it whatever all right so um yeah a little bit of advice though when you're actually working with lawnmower blades this steel is so hardened it will destroy your blade so if you have an abrasive blade it probably might work better because those are a lot easier to replace than the big uh, uh metal blade that i have on the chop saw but it's doing great nice and clean cuts it is not even hot to the touch works fantastically so what are we going to do with the how we're going to attach this well we got our saw blade here so what i did was actually sit it on top i got this thing spaced uh it's about an inch and a half on the front inch and a half in the back so which would be plenty so i put a little mark there and i put a little mark there i did the same thing on the other side and what we're going to do is i'm going to take this and cut a notch right in there and then we're going to slide the blade in weld all the way around it and also weld it all the way down not really all the way just big heavy tacks all the way down and then throw it with some paint and then we should be good to go on the front good to go on the back and then the center one we will address that here in a second so this is the board that i'm actually using this is off of another project um, i actually had my uh, arrow of light plaques hanging from this uh, for uh, crossing over from cub scouts to boy scouts so it works perfectly you lay it on top of both tires that means this whole thing is nice and level you sit it on top and it holds it for you all right so let's get marking. All right, we're gonna get our blade, got our marks. And we just easily 
There you go. You cut that little section out. This slides right in. Weld it. Well, grind that off. Throw some weld through primer, and then tack that on there. And then I'm gonna hold this out about two inches away from the deck so I can actually get my sides back on. Weld it. Weld the other side, and then we'll deal with the center. So let's go. All right, so we have both ends of them actually welded in. I uh, just need to throw some more paint on there, maybe a couple extra little welds once it cools down a little bit. Uh, the big problem is that the, your um, lawnmower blade is really thick and it's hardened steel. This here is just basic sheet metal. You can burn holes right through it. I burned one hole on this side. I should be able to fill it in once it cools off. Just hit it with a couple taps and it should be able to fill in. Grind it down, you'll never know the difference. So uh, when you are welding in mater uh, materials that are not even close to being the same, uh, make sure you're, you're pointing at the thicker stuff first. Let that get really hot and then go, in this particular case, since there's such a big dramatic difference between the blade and the actual metal, uh, the, the stamped steel, I went on a, a two to one second uh, rotation. So one, two, pull it down. One, two, pull it down. Every third second, I pull it down to the actual uh, stamp steel. And so hopefully you should, it's very easy to penetrate the stamp steel. It's very, it's very thin, especially when you're at the highest amperage that this little dinky welder can do. Uh, just make sure you spend more time on the thicker stuff than you do the other stuff or else you just keep blowing holes and you don't get penetration on the big stuff. So anyway, I think this should be good. It's not gonna uh, it's not gonna fall off. Uh, I don't believe I was stomping on that one over there, and it actually worked out great. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually find it the center, and then we're gonna cut another blade to go completely across. Um, on the other one, I got a little too hot, and it did warp the uh, metal a little bit. But I'm, it's not a show car, so I'm not that overly concerned about it. But if you are, don't spend so much time in one spot. Tack, 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 and keep going around in circles until it's all the way up there. All right, so the second one is in. It is just as sturdy as the other one. So yeah, if you got some old saw blades or uh, lawnmower blades, they actually work pretty well. Um, the only thing else I would like to do is actually cover the inside of this a little bit to keep debris and stuff off your project or just out of the trailer itself. But this will at least protect the other drivers. And also you can use it as a step. So we're good to go now. Uh, I just gotta put, some, uh, put the lights back on. I think I'm gonna put them on the fenders. And then uh, I'm going to weld some uh, brackets up front. And I guess you don't really need to see that because we've done it in other videos. Now, one thing I would have to say that I didn't do this time, but I would suggest you do it next time is, uh, yeah, protect yourself. Um, I'm probably going to get sunburn on my arms. Um, I don't weld that often, but when I do, I do like to use the safety stuff. I just didn't do it this time only because it is so blistery hot. Um, probably a bad decision, but we'll find out. So anyway, um, yeah, do it yourself. Small projects. Get this stuff done. Use what you got. Uh, just don't be stupid about it and use, you know, mild steel for something that needs to be something harder. You know, that type of stuff. Just use your head. You're fine. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and weld this up, but I'm going to cut it here. You guys enjoy. Have fun. Check out some of the other videos. Hopefully here soon I'll have the Jeep on this going to Uari. But I think I said that already. Or maybe even have a uh, steel plate to put on the back. We'll see. All right, until next time, enjoy yourself and have fun. Bye now.